Once before on this channel, we shared our keen disappointment over the cancellation of promising games. These cancellations deprived us of the chance to enjoy great-looking games such as Pirates of the Caribbean, Armada of the Damned, Star Wars 1313, and Silent Hills, which never got to show us what it would be like to play a full game of PT. Maybe I'm <laughs> Probably for the best in my case, that one. Still, despite us being sad about it on the internet, video games continue to get cancelled after giving us a glimpse of what they might be like. And, as we all know, the best games are the ones you never get to play. Here are seven games that we'd love to play that are never going to see the light of day. Enjoy and beware spoilers ahead for your day, because man, I'm sad again now. This time around for the Boomblox Bash Party, we saved a lot of the really cool ideas uh, to, you know, for the next one. Jurassic Park director Steven Spielberg is a man who digs video games. And it's this digging of video games we have to thank for the creation of Boom Blocks, the physics-y block puzzler for the Nintendo Wii on which the legendary movie maker collaborated. From Steven Spielberg and Electronic Arts comes the ultimate blockbuster. It's also presumably what we have to thank for the creation of upcoming game-themed movie Ready Player One, which contains more Easter eggs than supermarket shelves in January. Let us finish Christmas first. I only came here to escape, but I found something much bigger than just myself. What interests us most about Spielberg dabbling with video games, however, is the game we'll never get to play, a sci-fi adventure once known as LMNO. In another collaboration between Spielberg, the dude behind Jaws, and Electronic Arts, the publisher behind Boom Blocks, LMNO would have been an action adventure about an intriguing alien called Eve. In the game, which was only ever spied in action in this concept video, you had to help Eve evade and escape the authorities. Like E.T., if E.T. could do parkour and was 40% less creepy. Got a corner! What the? Right there. But only 40%. Ultimately, EA deemed the side project too ambitious and canned it, leaving us to forever wonder what would have happened to a strange little girl with special powers on the run from the man. And then Stranger Things came out, obviously. You don't seem to belong here. If you've never played Parappa the Rapper, you're missing out as it's definitely in my top three games about a rapping dog of all time. Ooh. Yeah. The game had you play as the eponymous Parappa, a dog who emceed his way through such daily tasks as having a driving lesson. Step on the gas. Step on the gas. Queuing for the bathroom. And learning karate from an onion. It was a brilliant slice of rhythm action weirdness, so when a new game from Parappa's developers was announced as coming to Kickstarter, I was hype, 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 up to play the game. Hype, hype, hyped up to play the game. Oh, fine, see yourself. That game was Project Rap Rabbit, a rhythm action game about a rapping bunny, a combination even more impressive when you learn it was set in 16th century Japan, some 400 years before hip-hop was actually invented. Unlike the rapping in Parappa the Rapper, which takes the form of jolly cooperation between MCs, Project Rap Rabbit was to take the form of rap battles against evil animal overlords, which gave you multiple choices on how to respond to a rival rapper's rhymes. Gameplay came in three phases. Listen, in which you listened to your opponent's verse. I'm living it up by dream, dream, hanging. Oh wait, that's my three-star bold appetite. Respond, in which you use a Mass Effect-style conversation wheel to choose how to reply. And rap, in which you hit buttons in time, parappa style to spit hot fire about frogs or whatever. Living the dream, this ain't no race race. Now take your hissing and get some mommy kissing, kissing. Yo, what's up? How well you rapped would affect your swag gauge, which was the key to determining whether you would succeed or fail. We like rabbits. Tasty, tasty. Unfortunately, Project Rap Rabbit fell well short of its £855,000 Kickstarter goal, and so the game was shelved, presumably indefinitely. Which is a shame, because we're always up for more rhythm action games, and the retro-futuristic alternate history Japan of Legends looked like a super interesting setting for Nana Onsha's trademark quirky storytelling. Bad news for rhythm action game fans, then. But at least I'll keep making rock band games forever. Oh my god, now I'm really sad. Oh my god, now I'm really Not sad. Not now!
I think we can all agree that Silent Hills was going to be great. After all, it was a new entry in the consistently good Silent Hill series, involved Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus, and was scarier than a midnight FaceTime call with Sadako from The Ring. <laughs> But as we've covered previously, it's also deader than, well, the family of that dude from PT. So we were delighted when we saw footage from a game called Allison Road, a project clearly trying to continue PT's legacy of scaring people shitless in a suburban house. In the prototype gameplay released by developer Far From Home, we see an unnamed protagonist waking up in a suburban home and embarking on an epic quest for some aspirin. Oh, thank God. I thought I was out. Before long, however, it becomes apparent that they are being stalked by one of those nightmarish ghost ladies that seem to be everywhere these days. Please stop seeing me. Thank you. The debt to PT was pretty obvious from the gameplay released. Six members of one. Chalmers, we again hope to keep you in suspense. And it looked like it was going to offer you more to do than PT, since it had an inventory and equipable weapons that I can't imagine would do you much good against this thing. Ah! Anyway, the brief glimpse we got of the game looked great, and it did a really good job of ramping up the intensity, starting off calm. Let's turn that damn thing off. Building up the tension. And then going full on horror movie. Alison Road was officially cancelled in June 2016, but the developers stated two months later that work was resuming on the game. That said, there are only two of them, and we haven't heard anything from them in almost two years, so we're not holding our breath. Well, I mean, we are, but that's only so the ghost lady can't hear us. Might just go back here. Speaking of Guillermo del Toro, long before he was a part of PT or making moving love stories about fishmen, he was involved in another video game called Insane. Insane was set to be a survival horror game made by del Toro in collaboration with developers Volition, the team behind both the Red Faction and Saints Row series, although quite how the latter game's sensibilities would have translated to a survival horror game, we'll never know. I suppose it is pretty horrifying. <laughs> The reason we'll never know is that despite being announced at the 2010 Spike Video Game Awards by Del Toro himself, publisher THQ cancelled the game in 2012 as the company started to go belly up. All we saw of the game was a 30 second teaser trailer that looked like a corn music video crossed with the tape from The Ring. But the reason we think Insane could have been brilliant is because of the people involved. Firstly, there was Del Toro, a genius filmmaker and video game fan, who described his vision for the game as taking players to a place they have never seen before, where every single action makes them question their own senses of morality and reality. Which, I mean, this was 2010, so he hadn't played Candy Crush yet. Then there was comic book artist Guy Davis, listed as one of the key designers on the game, who worked with Del Toro on Pacific Rim and Crimson Peak, as well as designs for his as-yet unproduced version of H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountains of Madness, so you just know it was going to look beautiful and creepy and weird. Then there's developer Volition, which has a great track record in making quality video games. I stand by my statement. Anyway, the intellectual property rights for Insane reverted back to Del Toro when the game was cancelled, so there's a chance it could be resurrected somewhere down the line. But considering how his unfinished projects based on At the Mountains of Madness, Halo, Pinocchio, The Witches, Justice League, Dark, Van Helsing and Bioshock are going, we wouldn't hold out hope. You might know Platinum Games as the team behind such excellent games as Vanquish, 
the wonderful 101, and Bayonetta. And you might know Hideki Kamiya as the game director behind some of the harshest ownings ever dished out on Twitter. No, he's, he's right, I deserved that. And though in 2017 Platinum was widely praised for sleeper hit Nier Automata, it was bittersweet on account of how 2017 was also supposed to see the release of Platinum's Xbox-exclusive action RPG, Scalebound. Scalebound was to tell the story of Drew, a 20-something EDM enthusiast who looked more like he should be riding a Razor scooter around a Facebook office than fighting monsters. Luckily, he had a partner in the form of Dragon Thuban, who was inexplicably best friends with Drew. Maybe they met at a Prodigy concert. I'd get off if you'd ask me to. Use your words! Drew had a bow, sword, and mines, and could transform into a dragon-human hybrid to take down enemies, but he was aided immeasurably by Thuban, who you could command, telling it where to go... Over there! ...and what to do when it got there. Wreck it! It's usually wreck it. What we had seen of Scalebound was really promising. There was the obvious pedigree of the team behind it, it looked super pretty, and the combat, as with most Platinum games, at least appeared satisfying and very, very cool. It had kind of a Monster Hunter World vibe, but without the thing where the monster runs off to a 12th location while you plod after it, cursing your short human legs. Here, monsters just get deliciously flame-broiled by your scaly pal, saving you tons of legwork. Sadly, that's all we'll ever see of Scalebound, as Microsoft officially cancelled its development in January of 2017. This is a shame, as the game was also set to feature co-op multiplayer from start to finish, as well as customizable dragons, something I was genuinely excited about after seeing it in a Scalebound presentation at Gamescom in 2015. And that isn't just because Kamiya was in the room and I was scared of what he'd call me on Twitter if I didn't seem enthusiastic enough. I'm just not gonna look. I am reborn. I am a soul reaver. Legacy of Kane is a series with a cult following. It's most closely associated with development studio Crystal Dynamics, of recent Tomb Raider fame. Gaining popularity on the original PlayStation, Legacy of Kane starred a disfigured and emaciated vampire called Raziel. It was an open world action adventure game that had you shifting between the real world and a sort of spectral dark world. Sort of like Zelda A Link to the Past, if Link occasionally took a break from smashing pots to drain a defenseless creature of all its blood. Legacy of Kane Dead Sun, which had been handed off to a developer called Climax, was going to be the game that dragged this beloved series into the Xbox 360 and PS3 generation. In particular, it featured a nifty transition between the real and the spectral worlds, which in this game were substantially different environments. That's probably why they never finished it, because they were making twice as much game as anyone else. In the end, and with seven million dollars spent, Legacy of Kane Dead Sun was cancelled by publisher Square Enix, after similar games Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 and Darksiders 2 tanked harder than Bovington Tank Museum. Open 10 to 5 daily. Even Sunday? Even Sunday. No way! Wow! Still, fans of Legacy of Kane must have gotten used to it. There have been 10 games cancelled in a grand game development journey that has only produced 5 Legacy of Kings that have actually been released. Casualties include Pillars of Nosgoth, Sirens, Shifter, Legacy of Kane the Dark Prophecy, and Shakan 2 the Forever Map. I'm most disappointed about that one. You promised he'd be forever. At least we eventually got to play the multiplayer mode for Legacy of Kane Dead Sun, which was being built by a separate team called Psionics and became a free to play title called Nosgoth, which went into open beta back in 2015 and promptly closed down in 2016 before its official release. Eleven! Eleven cancelled games! Are you going for some kind of record? Imagine a video game empire that combined the toy-selling power of beloved Pixar characters, Marvel superheroes and the entire Star Wars oeuvre. Such an empire would last a thousand years, you would think. And so we did think, back when Toys to Life sandbox series Disney Infinity was flying high and selling toys like nobody's business. And yet, 
in the end, the empire lasted a mere three years between the launch of the first game in 2013 and when, not long after the launch of Disney Infinity 3.0, Disney put an end to the series in 2016. I mean, three years, that's not exactly infinity, is it? I haven't felt this ripped off since that unlimited brunch place kicked me out. They didn't kick you out, they took you to hospital. Yeah, tell that to my lawyers. Whatever, as a result, we'll never get to play Disney Infinity 4.0, which means the final offering from the Disney Infinity project was Disney Infinity 3's add-on playset for Finding Dory. Oh, that forgetful fish. I'm just saying nine pancakes isn't unlimited pancakes. They didn't say anything about reasonable limits when I came into the brunch place. <laughs> Reports say that the fourth Disney Infinity game, which had been mooted for launch in 2017, would have brought together box office smash hits Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Thor Ragnarok, Star Wars The Last Jedi and Pixar's Coco. And also Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. Because only in the form of a Disney Infinity action figure can you really recreate the weird plasticky look of Johnny Depp's face when he's that young Jack Sparrow in CGI in, in that one scene. Regardless, the dazzling sci-fi worlds of Thor Ragnarok would have been amazing to see rendered in the toy-like stylings of Disney Infinity, and the Day of the Dead skeleton figurines for Coco would have looked wicked on my mantelpiece. Not only that, but rumour had it that the cancelled fourth Disney Infinity game would have introduced Toy Box Story Mode, in which, at long last, you could play an entire story with any character in the game, crossing the canonical streams whether it made sense or not. And finally, I'd get to play Poe Dameron nicking Star-Lord's spaceship, like in the fanfiction I wrote. Wait, no, what? Who said anything about fanfiction? There was never any fanfiction. Ronin's necrocraft are gaining on us. What's our next move? <laughs> that question implies there was some sort of plan to begin with. Thanks for watching this video about the best games you'll never play, but what you can do, instead of playing those non-existent video games, is watch another video from us. So up here is the previous video in this series, the nine best games you'll never play. Uh, it's from quite early in the channel's life, so you can watch that and see how, yeah, our voices will sound all weird and flat. Be like this, talking about the things, because we haven't really learned how to do YouTube voices yet. So there's that, and down here is a video from Outside Extra, who've always been good from the start, so there's no quality problems there. Uh, and uh, that's about the eight best games that you can play, but you might have missed because they came out in 2017 and you were busy doing other stuff. Thanks for watching. See you next time.